My name is Mark Stiles. I work at a company called Valir. And today I'm here to talk to you about a project I've been working on for about a year called Psychor Cognitive Services. But first, let me ask you a question. Do you hear that? That's the sound of change in the digital age. Now, I know you didn't hear anything, but change is coming. And this is the story of how Psychor is changing. So the story starts with Microsoft. Internally, they've been using machine learning for their own products. And about a year and a half ago, they started releasing these APIs to the public. Now it's 36, and they take anything from audio, video, images, and text, and what it returns to you is an analysis. Now you can create any one of these APIs in Azure, so basically, you get what you pay for. But there is a free tier, so you can get started with these today at no cost. Now let's talk about change, because everything over time changes, even software. The thing is that sometimes the change that takes place is so dramatic, so different, that it becomes something altogether new. Now, Sitecore is like this. Sitecore is a content management system, one of the best in the world. And people like myself have spent a lot of time integrating new types of content into the system for it to sort and search. But this is different. This isn't content. This is actually quite game-changing, because Sitecore itself is evolving. It's no longer a content management system. It's a content learning system. It's not just storing your information. It understands it. An example of this, I took an image from the homepage stock installation of Sitecore and I uploaded it. The analysis I got back told me that there's a woman in this image. She's around 24 years old, and her face is where the box is. Now you take that and you scale that up to your entire media library, and all of a sudden, you can know what's in your images without having to look at them. And one of the key benefits of this is that you can build something like a faceted image search. Now you can sort and filter, you can pair with content, and this really is fast. And one of the main benefits of having a fast image search is that you can find inappropriate content and filter it out. So if you have a system with a lot of user-generated content, perhaps you're in a corporate environment with a lot of regulations you have to follow, you can automatically filter out a lot of unregulated content. Now, if there's something that kind of falls in a gray area, you can send that to human review. And Microsoft has an entire service around this that manages the workflow process around all your users. Another really important API that's available to you is a custom vision service. What this allows you to do is upload all your own images with your own tags. And when you analyze a new image, it'll talk back to you in your own language. Now, I've talked a lot about images, but there's another whole portion of content that we haven't, which is text. And what's important about text is that unlike images where you couldn't search and now you can, you could always search text. The leg up here is that you're not just searching text, you're understanding its meaning. You're understanding the mood, the context, and most importantly, the intention. Because when you understand the intention of what someone's trying to say, you can take action on it. For example, if they wanted to buy a book or find an article, instead of sending them to a search results page, you can ask them if they want to put this book into their cart or take them directly to that article page. And what this means is that you can build on top of it a chatbot system, an auto response. Now, chatbots are limited, but the underlying language technology is not. And you can take this and you can apply it to a number of different places where users are providing you content. Search boxes, form fields, responses to emails, even your Twitter replies. And you can begin to understand what it is that people are saying. If they're becoming frustrated, maybe you can reach out to them, offer to call them. Now that's great customer service. I have a demo of this as a chatbot. It's called Ola. And it's the progeny of one of the founders of Sitecore. So a lot of what I've talked about is images and text, but there's another type of content that you can analyze, and that's analytics. Now you pair that up with user data and content, and you have the recipe for a content recommendation engine. Now that's not part of this demo, but I do know somebody who's working on it. And I gotta tell you, I've seen their demo, and it's fantastic. And I'm working on them to help integrate it into this project. Look at that, it's demo time. 
So I'm going to jump into Sitecore and I'm going to show you a little bit about what I've been building. OK, so now we're in Sitecore. So there's two things I want to go through and show you. One is the image search, and the other is the chatbot. But before I show you the image search, what I really want to show you is the information that's underlying it. And to do that, I've got to show you the, the analysis on a single image. And all the images here in this media library have been analyzed, and the analysis is stored locally. So if I select this image, go to the Cognitive tab, and I view analysis, and then I expand. What you're going to see here is a visual representation of the analysis returned. Now each one of these tabs represents a different API and a different analysis. So if here under the visual analysis, it's identifying that there's a face here. And if I hover, it's going to tell me that it's a woman, age 24. There's more information here in these boxes. If I hover, this is the description. And it has a caption saying it's a woman talking on a cell phone. And there are tags of things that it thinks that are in this image. If I go over in the next box, this is the tags. Now these tags are slightly different in that they have a confidence score. And this is how confident the API is that this is in the image. The next section is the adult. So what this is doing is trying to identify adult and racy content. Now this isn't used for the content filtering. That's a separate API that deals with both images and text. Here's some color information, but because this image is largely white, all you're really seeing is white color information. And the last section here is categories. For this particular image, it doesn't give anything interesting. If I jump into the emotional analysis, it's still identifying that this, there's a face in this image, but the information that it's going to give me is slightly different. Now, of course, it's off the charts with happiness because this is a, a marketing image, and most marketing images are filled with wonderful, smiling, happy people. So to show you some of the nuance, I'm going to show you some other images later. The facial analysis gives me information more about the, the face, the structure, the facial hair, the pose. It's identifying that this person is not wearing glasses. Just information more <laughs> structurally about the face. The textual analysis doesn't apply to this image because there isn't any text in it. So what I'm going to do is show you this image here of the logo. And in that analysis, what you're going to see is each of the words in this image is highlighted. If I hover, it'll, it'll give me what that text is. The reason that this is important is because when I'm building a search, all the things that I'm searching against are the things that I can identify. So because it, it actually knows that Sitecore is in the image, I can search for Sitecore itself. To demonstrate a few more images in their analysis, we have some images here that I'm going to show you. You may recognize this handsome young fellow. So obviously it has still the same information. But what's interesting here is that under the description, it actually is able to identify this person as Harrison Ford. The reason that is because there is he's relatively famous. So people who are famous, political leaders, that sort of thing, are going to be able to be identified. I think it's able to look up certain information by users who are in Wikipedia. The average user probably doesn't have to worry about their information being shown up in the cognitive services. Another interesting thing that it can do is identify multiple images, multiple faces. So here, even though this is the same person, it can tell the difference between them. It is still able to pick out that it's Dwayne Johnson, uh, but everything else is still the same. Of course, you know, pretty happy here. He's done well in his life. Another thing I wanted to demonstrate again was the, the emotion, because the emotion is kind of difficult to understand at first. Again, mar most marketing images have, uh, you know, happy people in them. So to be able to demonstrate, I needed to find an image on the internet that was more complicated. So if I jump into the emotional analysis and I look at this, it's telling me there, this woman is a little angry, disgusted, some fear, some sadness, and surprise. Kind of a combination of all of these things. 
which is kind of accurate because really, I mean, she's not making any particular face. Uh, she's more snarling at the camera, but you know, it is able to at least identify some nuance in what she is uh, representing. So the last image here, what I want to show is the fact that it's able to identify that he's wearing glasses. Not just any glasses, but reading glasses. So it knows the difference between reading glasses and sunglasses. Which is somewhat helpful sometimes if you're, if you're looking to try to match a marketing image to a particular campaign, being able to know the difference between all these different things is important. So the last thing I want to demonstrate is uploading an image. And what happens when you add new images? So if I were to select this, hit upload, give it a minute, go to the cognitive tab, and I go and I view in the analysis. And you notice that it's already finished in analyzing this image over four different APIs. If I hover here, so I'm still able to identify the gender, the age. Again, it's not able to identify this Mark Hamill given the face, it's probably reasonable. Uh, but it is still able to do it in relatively real time. A couple more things. So what I added here is the ability to view the analysis, to reanalyze the analysis for whatever reason if the analysis became corrupt or if you lost the connection in the middle, something happened, you can reanalyze it. It'll go in and requery each of the APIs. Another thing here is kind of worth mentioning is the populate alt tag. So there was an article that actually prompted me and motivated me to start this project in the first place. And all it was was about populating the alt tags for an image using cognitive services. So of course I had to add it in here because I thought it was a great idea. So if I'm click on this button, what I'm given as options are the captions for this image from the description. I can select that, update the alt tag. If I go back and refresh, notice that the alt tag is now populated. I can also do that on a folder level. So if I click up here, I'm not just setting it on this image, I'm setting it for any image in that folder, in subfolders. I can give it a confidence threshold to make sure that the description is confident enough. If I give it 75% confidence, I can tell it to overwrite the existing value and then update them all in this folder. Just a nice feature to have, try to add a little bit more value. Now let me show you what the search actually can do. So I'm here in edit mode and I click into a text field, click edit. So what I've done is I've added a button here, image, insert image with cognitive search. But before I show you that, actually what I want to do is show you what the existing image search looks like. So of course here you can drill in and go into the find an image manually, or you can try to use a search. If I were to go in here and I were to type in the Sitecore, what I'm going to find is a folder that I can't insert in because it's not an image. If I were to type in outdoor, it's going to show me something, but it's not necessarily going to show me a thumbnail. And it's not necessarily helping me identify the particular image that I'm looking for. So now, when I go and I show you what I built here, what I was trying to do was really make this a, a major leap in improvement. So what you're seeing here is thumbnails for every image. Uh, this is page too, so you can jump back and forth. There's a lot of iconography in the launch site, course site, which I've installed. I can select an image. I can even search here. If I were to search for Sitecore, now I'm going to find images with the word Sitecore in it. If I search for cat, I'm going to find cats. Of course, except for this, it's a fox. But, you know, pretty close. I can kind of understand why it kind of thinks that's a cat. Search for outdoor. I'm going to find images of things that are outdoors. And I also have this slide up. And I can filter on image size. 
gender, if I want pictures of all men, maybe I want pictures of all women. Maybe I want people with reading glasses. Maybe I want people with no glasses. I even have the ability to filter by age. Maybe I'm in a particular campaign focusing on a particular dem demographic and I can tighten this up and find just the people in that particular age range. If I look for person, I select somebody, hit insert, accept. So that is the image search. Now what I want to show you is the chat bot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here into the launch pad. Now I'm going to show you the chat bot. It's so under the control panel. I've added a button here for Ola. If I click in, what I'm going to see is a text-based interface. So Ola immediately responds to me, the number of pre canned hello responses, and prompts me to interact with him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with something that I generally do as a developer anytime I'm in a new environment. First thing you really need to know. The version information. Otherwise, it would take a good number of clicks or digging through the file system to find this. Uh, but here it is. Within a, a handful of letters, I can find out what it is pretty immediately. The interesting thing here, though, is that this is not a command line interface. I can actually ask it the same thing in a number of different ways, and it's still able to identify what it is that I'm looking for. Now think about that. It's flexible with its language. It's starting to feel more like a natural conversation. Of course, this is a very linear thing that I'm trying to do, and if I wanted to try something else, I need a way to find that out. Of course, I can ask it. There's a list of things that it can do. And the more things that you add, the more it will be able to tell you. So the first thing I want to try to do is maybe something a little bit more complicated. Because, to be honest, what I've been doing right now is very linear. Right? I've asked it something, and it responds. But what if there's something I need to do that's a little bit more complicated, and it needs more information from me? Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to say, now to publish something, I need to know what the content item is, the database, whether or not you want to publish sub-items, language. But it's going to need to ask me all that information one at a time. So here, what I'm going to do is tell it the, the home node and start going to ask me for the next thing. Now, of course, it's starting to feel more like a conversation. But it's not really a conversation unless, of course, you can end the conversation. Because maybe I've gotten to this point and I wanted to publish and then I realized, you know what, look at the time, it's actually too early, maybe it's, there's something else I need to check before I do that. I want to quit this first. <laughs> you know, I can tell it to, to stop, to quit, never mind, you know, I don't want to do that. A number of different things that will get it to quit and take on to the next task. Again though, if I wanted if publishing was something that I wanted to do, you'll notice that it's actually not going to ask me for the item path. I've already provided the item path. So it's able to pub figure out that I want to publish and the particular item that I wanted to publish. It's, it understands the context as well as the intention and it's able to skip the parts that it already has. So now it's trying to ask me, what database do you want to publish to? Now, you'll notice that it's actually giving me a couple of options. Well, in this case, one option, but if there were more publishing uh, targets, it would give me all the options. But in this case, it's giving me an option and I can click on that. Of course, if I don't click on that and I type in something ridiculous, 
it's just going to continue to ask me that until it gets either a proper valid response or, you know, I click on this. What language should I publish to? English. Do you want to publish children? Yes. Publish children to the web database in English with its children. All right. Now I've just published. And it really wasn't all that painful. Uh, now, there's probably a number of other ways that this could be improved on, maybe with a, a review before I submit. But the idea is here, and we can start doing a number of different things that are really useful, really powerful, and make them a lot easier for you to do. And more importantly, since you're on a potentially a mobile device, maybe you're on the go, maybe you're stuck in traffic, maybe you're on the T. All these places where you normally wouldn't be doing work, but you can now. Not to say that you should spend all your free time doing work, but of course, if you're in that position and it's something you want to do, now you can. Now again, if I'm here and I'm just typing in something and it doesn't know what it is I'm trying to do, it's going to continue to ask me, you know, hey, I don't really understand that. Can you say that again? Again, of course, if I get to this point and I'm a user, I'm a human, I have emotions and I'm, and I'm getting frustrated, it can respond to that. They can tell you, you know, look, I can tell you're irritated. Let's take it back a, a step. Maybe I want to have somebody call you. Maybe I'm going to send an email to tell somebody that, that this particular thing is, is not working correctly. There's a number of different ways that you can deal with it, but the important thing is that we can identify it now and improve the user experience. Okay, so let's say I've been on here, I've been working for a little while, I've gotten a pretty good number of things done, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good, I'm ready to quit. I can just tell it to log me out, and it will. And here I am back at the login screen. And now when you really step back and you kind of think about this, right, this is a, a chatbot, it has its limitations, but it doesn't have to do everything. It just has to be useful. And I think it is. So now you've seen the demo, and hopefully you're interested. And if you're a developer and you want source code, you can get it today. It's on GitHub, it's open source, and you can build it and use it as much as you like. Of course, if you're not a developer, you're probably looking around wondering if there's a module, maybe somewhere in the marketplace. Well, not yet. I'm working on that. I'm hoping to have it early in the next year. And when it happens, I'm going to write about it on my blog. So here's a link to my blog as well. So you'll be the first to know if you're following on my feed. Beyond that, if you are a developer and you do want to work with it, uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Slack. If you get in problems and you have questions, reach out to me. And if you get that far, you're going to need to know a little bit about the architecture of how I built it so that you can work with it yourself. So I've followed the Helix architecture. There's three layers, foundation, the feature, and the project. And the foundation, there are two libraries. One is the one that connects directly to Microsoft's APIs. All it knows about is all the methods and all the parameters and how to turn JSON objects back into classes. On top of that is a Sitecore project. And what that does is it wires in all your config keys, as I'm logging, in case you're making calls and it calls an error, it'll log that error for you. On top of that, this is where each of those features is built in the feature layer. So the image search and the Ola chat are two different features with two different projects, and those will eventually become two different modules. Above that is where everything kind of gets implemented. So to demonstrate a bit of it, what I did was I took the launch site and I extended it. So what you would do is you take this project and publish it onto an installation of your launch site core site, and it adds a navigation link that will go through, has a lot of subpages that instrument all the APIs. Well, not all, but most. Going forward, I'm obviously going to take these two features that I have and put them to the marketplace. And I'm working on integrating others like the recommendations API. Beyond that, there's other services besides Microsoft that provides APIs as well. And I want to focus on trying to get those integrated, like Big ML, Wit AI, maybe even Watson. So if you're interested and you want to find some place where you can start and make some headway into some things that I haven't even touched yet, there's a few things that I have that you could look at. One of the things is the transcription. So it takes audio and it turns it into text. You can also take text and turn it into audio. Beyond that, 
there are these experimental APIs. They're not commercial grade yet, but they're out there. And they deal with time and events, distance and routing. They even have some gesture controls. And what this spells to me is a lot of integration with e-commerce. And since Sitecore 9 is supercharged with a new e-commerce engine, I think this would be a prime area of focus. Now this is my last thought, and this is some artwork that I had commissioned to promote this project. Now on its face, I hope it's kind of obvious that it's about the relationship between man and machine. But deeper than that, this is an image from a show, a TV show, 20 years before iPhones had Google on them. Now how did they know what the future would look like? And the truth is, they didn't. This is really what they hoped the future would be. So remember, as you go out there and you're working with clients and you're engineering new solutions, make use of the really powerful tools that are available to you to build things that people hope to use. Because that is owning the experience. Thank you.